Former Defense Minister of the so-called DPR, Igor Strelkov Girkin, who was found guilty of public calls for extremist activity, sent his comrades a letter from the colony. In it, the terrorist sums up this year of war since, according to him, there is very little time left before the autumn off-road conditions begin and, in all likelihood, the summer-autumn campaign can be considered over. Girkin writes that, in fact, Russia suffered a strategic military failure this summer stroke autumn. We failed to implement the plan for a broad offensive on Kharkiv, for which forces, resources and reserves had been prepared for a year, and then we missed a blow, although not too strong, but very painful, with the transfer of ground operations to our own territory. But the most important thing is that we lost time, he writes. Girkin predicts that after the humiliating slap on the nose near Kursk, there will soon be new ones which could lead to Belarus being drawn into the war. Unfortunately, this is practically inevitable. It is difficult to say how soon this will happen. I do not have access to the GRU and SVR intelligence reports in VK5, but we can cautiously assume that Belarus, as well as possibly Moldova, could be drawn into the war next year. The participation of Poland and Romania is not excluded, although without a declaration of war, I believe, Girkin said. Recently, NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte sharply criticized Belarus for its role in supporting Russia's war effort in Ukraine, telling reporters that Belarus is enabling Russia at the expense of its own population. Rutte outlined how Belarus has provided infrastructure and territorial support to Russia further entrenching itself in the conflict. Addressing the assembled reporters, Rutte was clear that Belarus's actions are not only detrimental to Ukraine, but are also harming the Belarusian people. All evidence is that Belarus, that Minsk, is supporting Russia in the war effort with infrastructure, with territory and at a cost to your population, Rutte said. Rutte also made clear that Belarus is not acting from a position of strength. He explained that Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko's alignment with Moscow is weakening the country as it continues to provide crucial support to Russia's military operations in Ukraine. The Israeli military released camera drone footage on Thursday said to show the last moments of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar's life. In a room wrecked by shelling, a man is sitting in a chair, his face covered with a cloth, possibly to hide his identity. The video shows the man, with one wounded hand, throwing a stick at the drone. The military then fired an additional shell at the building, causing it to collapse and killing Sinwar, military spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Haggery said. He said Sinwar was found with a bulletproof vest, grenades, and 40,000 shekels. Some of Sinwar's DNA had previously been found in tunnels near where troops found the bodies of six hostages at the end of August, Haggery said. The military believes weeks of searches in the area had pushed Sinwar to come out of hiding, he said. The military said three militants were killed in the operation. Police said one of them was confirmed as Sinwar by dental records, fingerprints and DNA tests. Sinwar was imprisoned by Israel from the late 1980s until 2011, and during that time he underwent treatment for brain cancer, leaving Israeli authorities with extensive medical records. Israeli leaders celebrated his killing as a settling of scores just over a year after Hamas-led militants killed some 1,200 people in Israel and kidnapped 250 others in an attack that stunned the country. They also presented it as a turning point in the campaign to destroy Hamas, urging its fighters to surrender and release some 100 hostages still in Gaza. Footage North Korean Army soldiers training at a military training ground in Russia have been released. The images circulated on Russian Telegram channels have been captured by Russian soldiers at the training ground. Hundreds of soldiers can be seen in the released footage. 
The Russian military says there are more Koreans in the area. It should be noted that Kirill Budinov, head of the main directorate of defense intelligence of Ukraine earlier said that around 11,000 North Korean infantrymen were currently undergoing training in eastern Russia before heading to fight in Ukraine. They will be ready by November 1, the intelligence chief said. He noted that North Korean troops will use Russian equipment and ammunition, and the first echelon of 2,600 soldiers will go to Kursk, where fighting continues. Where the rest of the troops will be sent is still unknown. We don't have the full picture right now, Budinov noted.